Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. I am Aditi. A historic moment awaits Indian Space Research Organisation as it plans to take another giant leap in the aerospace sector. When the Chandrayaan-2 satellite touches down on the moon's surface on September 6, 2019, two new images of the satellite have recently been released by ISRO. Chandrayaan-2 will go to the moon's south polar region with the aim of improving our understanding of the moon and make discoveries that will benefit India and the humanity as a whole. It is important to understand what makes the Chandrayaan-2 mission special. Firstly, it's the first space mission to conduct a soft landing on the moon's south polar region. Secondly, it is the first Indian expedition to attempt a soft landing and exploration on the lunar surface with homegrown technology. Thirdly, with this mission, Indian will become only the fourth country ever to soft land on the lunar surface after the US, Russia and most recently China with this Changi 4 mission. Today in in-depth, we are discussing the Chandrayaan 2 mission, which is a natural sequel to the Chandrayaan 1. Its objective, its features, what makes it an exclusive mission. As India's second lunar expedition is expected to shed light on a completely unexplored section of the moon, its south polar region, ISRO has released a new image of the Chandrayaan-2 satellite. The Chandrayaan-2 mission will help us gain a better understanding of the origin and evolution of the moon as it will conduct detailed topographical studies, comprehensive mineralogical analysis and a host of other experiments on the lunar surface. In addition, it will also attempt a challenging exercise, a soft landing on the moon. A week away from its launch, the Indian Space Research Organization has released new images of the Chandrayaan-2 satellite. Its lander and rover, called Vikram and Pragyan respectively, are presumed to touch down on the moon's surface on 6 September 2019. The aim of the mission is to improve our understanding of the moon, discoveries that will benefit India and humanity as a whole. India's second sojourn to the moon, Chandrayaan-2, will start on 5th of July. According to ISRO Chairman K. Sivan, the lunar spacecraft will lift off at 2.51 am from the Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sriharikota in Andhra Pradesh. The launch will take place on board the GSLV Mark III vehicle, the heaviest rocket built by ISRO. Now we are getting ready for a next major mission from India, that is Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2 mission is planned to be have uh, the launch by July 15th, early morning, 2 o'clock and 51 minutes. That was the launch time, what we are planning. And the Chandrayaan 2 mission contains three components. That is the, the rover, which is having 27 kg. And we have next one is a lander, that's having about 1.4 ton. This uh, rover is kept inside the lander. This lander is kept on an orbiter. The orbiter is the 2.4 ton. The total composite module is mass about 3.8 ton. And this composite body is kept on the heat shield of the GSLV Mark III vehicle. And then we will be launching that one. This launch only I am telling on 15th July, 2 o'clock and 51 minutes early morning. And once they are launched, it is launched in the uh, high eccentric orbit with a 38,000 kilometer orbit size. It will land in September. It will carry a rover. It will be an extension of Chandrayaan-1. And the entire world is very keenly looking forward to its, uh, to the kind of information and inputs which it procures. According to ISRO, Chandrayaan-2 will be injected into an Earth parking 170 into 4 lakh 400 km orbit. A series of maneuvers will raise its orbit and put Chandrayaan-2 on the lunar surface trajectory. After entering moon sphere of influence, onboard thrusters will slow down the spacecraft for lunar capture to restrain it in the moon's gravitational field. 
A series of orbital maneuvers will then set Chandrayaan-2 in 100 by 100 km orbit around the Moon. On the day of landing, the lander will separate from the orbiter and perform complex maneuvers of rough braking and fine braking. Imaging of the landing site prior to landing will help find safe and hazard-free zones. The lander will finally land near the south pole of the Moon on 6 September 2019. Subsequently, the rover will roll out and carry out experiments on lunar surface for the duration of one lunar day, that is equal to 14 Earth days. The orbiter will continue its mission for one Earth year. The nearly 1,000 crore rupees mission is the most complex one in the history of ISRO. There are four major goals of Chandrayaan mission. The first goal is that it wants to study moon. It is the closest or closest satellite, what you can say, planet of the, uh, the Earth. And we want to know the history of Earth. And if you explore moon, then you can know better about the origin of the, our own planet, the Earth. This is first. Second, we want to do international cooperation by launching it because we are demonstrating high technology. Third mission is that we want to test advanced technology, higher technologies, space related technology, which could be used for further deep space exploration. And fourth is we want to inspire future the future generation of explorers and space scientists. Chandrayaan-2 has several science payloads to expand the lunar scientific knowledge through a detailed study of topography, seismography, mineral identification and distribution, surface chemical composition, thermophysical characteristics of topsoil and composition of the tenuous lunar atmosphere, leading to a new understanding of the origin and evolution of the Moon. The orbiter payloads will conduct remote sensing observations from a 100 km orbit, while the lander and rover payloads will perform measurements near the landing site. Of the 14 payloads which Chandrayaan-2 will carry to the Moon, 13 are indigenous and one is a passive payload of NASA. Chandrayaan-2 will make a landing at a site where no earlier mission has gone, which is near the south pole of the Moon. It is a completely unexplored territory and therefore offers great scientific opportunity to see and discover something new. The South Pole of the Moon also holds the possibility of the presence of water, which is an aspect that will be probed by Chandrayaan-2. In addition, the area is also supposed to have ancient rocks and craters that can offer clues to the history of Moon and also fossil records of the early solar system. The entire country will benefit benefited by the, the science what we got from this particular uh, the mission because we are going to the place where nobody else has gone. So we are expecting that a huge number of new science because like Chandrayaan 1 we have found, found water like that some new science we are expecting to be there. And this the entire scientific community of the nation as well as the global scientific community also looking for this mission eagerly waiting. With an estimated weight of 3.8 tons, Chandrayaan-2 will attempt a soft landing on the moon, adding to the complexity of the mission. If successful, India will join the US, the former Soviet Union and China, the only three other nations to have achieved the feat so far. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV Chandrayaan-2 is a fully indigenous mission that comprises three modules, an orbiter, a lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyan. It will be launched on board GSLV Mark III rocket, which is a three-stage heavy lift launch vehicle designed to carry four-ton class satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit. Now all three modules of Chandrayaan-2, Orbiter, Lander and Rover are getting ready for launch on 15th July. The Orbiter and Lander modules will be interfaced mechanically and stacked together as an integrated module and accommodated inside the GSLV Mark III launch vehicle.
The rover is housed inside the lander. The integrated module will reach the moon's orbit using orbiter propulsion module after its launch into earthbound orbit by GSLV Mark III. After the launch, it might take 35 to 45 days to reach the moon. And that's why the moon landing date is expected to be 6th September. Once Chandrayaan-2 reaches the lunar orbit, the lander Vikram will separate from the orbiter and soft land at the predetermined site close to the South Pole, which till now has not been explored by other countries. The rover will roll out for carrying out scientific experiments on the lunar surface. Instruments would also be mounted on the lander and orbiter for carrying out scientific experiments. After analyzing the content of the lunar surface, the rover will send data and images back to Earth through the orbiter within 15 minutes. Altogether, there will be 13 payloads in the spacecraft. Three payloads in rover Pragyan and ten payloads in lander Vikram and orbiter. According to news report, the launch of Chandrayaan 2 was postponed further to July in the backdrop of Israel's unsuccessful attempt to land on Moon. Israel's Israel's Bereshit spacecraft crashed during lunar landing on April 11th this year. ISRO is cautious about Chandrayaan-2, its first mission to land on any celestial body. In fact, the landing of the 3,290-kilo Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft will be much more difficult than Israel's Bereshit. Bereshit tried to touch down on a plane of solidified lava known as the Sea of Serenity, which has a flattened surface and more exposure to the sun, while Chandrayaan-2 will explore the South Pole so far, an unchartered territory. Only China's Chang'e 4 spacecraft had recently, in January, landed on the moon's far side, also known as the dark side because it faces away from the Earth and is comparatively unknown. As far as Chinese missiles are concerned, China has been pretty successful with their moon agenda. Uh, this is the fourth mission which they have la uh, launched. They are also making a landing of this mission into a far side of the moon where again nobody has ever landed earlier. Uh, China's mission is much much bigger than compared to India's mission. Uh, they are going to collect observations for a period of three months exceeding to one year period of time. And already this mission has been successful and good amount of observations has been collected by China. But one must understand that every country has got their own vision and their own requirements. So to my mind, it may not be correct to compare both the missions because the agendas of the both the missions are different. Let's now talk about India's first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. It carried five scientific payloads and also detected evidence of a hydrogen-oxygen chemical bond, lunar water, and examined radioactive elements on the surface that reflected the presence of ice on the moon. It also provided ISRO with the highest resolution map of the moon's surface thereby doing the groundwork for Chandrayaan-2. Here's a report on the success of Chandrayaan-1. Chandrayaan-1 was India's plus first two, lunar probe, launched successfully by the Indian Space Research Organization on 22nd October 2008 from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota. It was an unmanned spacecraft weighing 1,380 kilos with onboard power of 700 watts, launched from PSLV C-11 launch vehicle. The satellite made more than 3,400 orbits around the moon. The spacecraft carried 11 scientific payloads built in India, UK, USA, Germany, Bulgaria and Sweden. The mission comprised an orbiter and an impactor. The spacecraft was designed to study the moon including chemical, mineralogical and photogeologic mapping orbiting around it at the height of 100 kilometers from the lunar surface. 
the mission provided a major boost to the Indian space program as India effectively researched and indigenously developed the technology to explore the moon. The main objectives of the mission were to design, develop, launch and orbit a spacecraft around the moon using an Indian-made launch vehicle, to conduct scientific experiments using instruments on the spacecraft which would yield results. Prepare a three-dimensional atlas of both the near and the far sides of the moon, mapping chemical and mineralogical features of the entire lunar surface at high spatial resolution, mapping particularly the chemical elements, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, calcium, iron, titanium, radon, uranium and thorium. Increase scientific knowledge. Test the impact of a sub-satellite on the surface of the moon as a forerunner to the future soft landing missions. Detect water ice on the moon. As far as India's moon goals are concerned, India started its moon exploration in the year 2008 when the first mission to moon was undertaken. This mission lasted for nine months plus and it has collected lot amount of observations, particularly it has done the mineralogical mapping of the moon surface. Now as a second mission what India proposes to do is that uh, the mapping was done by using a satellite imagery. Now as a second mission India proposes to land a rover and a lander on the moon surface and actually take the readings from the surface of the moon. Uh, so this is a step additional what we have done with the moon mission 1. Chandrayaan-1 detected evidence of water across the lunar surface. NASA's instrument, Moon Mineralogy Mapper, aboard Chandrayaan-1 helped to find the existence of water molecules on the lunar surface. Its findings also include confirmation of the magma ocean hypothesis, meaning the moon was once completely molten. Terrain mapping camera on board Chandrayaan-1 has recorded images of the landing site of US spacecraft Apollo 15. They have also enabled scientists to study interaction between the solar wind and a planetary body like Moon without a magnetic field. Chandrayaan-1's X-ray spectrometer has detected titanium, confirmed the presence of calcium and gathered the most accurate measurements yet of magnesium, aluminium and iron on the lunar surface. India emerged as the fourth country in the world to hoist its flag on the lunar surface. After almost a year due to several technical issues and contact failure, on August 29, 2009, the ISRO officially declared the mission over. Chandrayaan-1 operated for 312 days against the planned two years, but was successful by achieving 95% of its planned objectives. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. ISRO's journey began on November 21, 1963 with the launch of a small rocket from Thumba on the outskirts of Thiruvananthapuram. Over the years, the Indian Space Agency has launched satellites for the country as well as for other nations. Besides Indian satellites, ISRO has sent 269 foreign satellites from 32 countries into space. Not only this, India has also achieved success in reaching Mars, the first country to do so in its maiden attempt. Let's take a look at all the missions successfully launched by ISRO since its inception. Space exploration in India began in 1960s. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was a physicist and industrialist who initiated space research and helped develop nuclear power in India. He is also popularly known as the father of India's space program. Sarabhai was instrumental in establishing the Physical Research Laboratory in Ahmedabad after returning from Cambridge in 1947. India launched its first sounding rocket from Thumba near Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala on 21st November 1963, marking the beginning of the Indian Space Programme. It was in 1962 that the Indian National Committee for Space Research was set up. It laid the foundation of Indian Space Research Organization in 1969. After setting up ISRO, the government constituted the Space Commission. It established the Department of Space in June 1972 and brought ISRO under the Department of Space in September 1972. India launched its first satellite Aryabhat in 1975 and then in 1979 Bhaskar-1 was launched. Aryabhat weighed 360 kilograms. On 10th August 1979, 
ISRO launched a series of satellites and named the mission Rohini. The Rohini series had four satellites, all launched by the satellite launch vehicle, and three that made it successfully to the orbit. Then, Arian Passenger Payload Experiment or RAPL was ISRO's first indigenous experimental communication satellite. It was launched on June 19, 1981. ISRO took a huge step by developing telecommunication satellite. The Indian National Satellite or INSAT system is one of the largest domestic communication satellite systems in Asia-Pacific region with nine operational communication satellites placed in geostationary orbit. It was commissioned in 1983. On August 30, 1983, the INSAT-1B satellite was launched. Full operational capability was achieved in October 1983. Rakesh Sharma made history by becoming the first and only Indian to travel to space in a Soviet rocket that was launched on April 2, 1984. Then on 17 March 1988, ISRO launched its first remote sensing mission IRS-1A. It was a part operational, part experimental mission to develop Indian expertise in satellite imagery. The first multi-purpose satellite INSAT-2A built by India was successfully operationalized in August 1992. INSAT-2A, B of the INSAT-2 series of satellites was launched on July 23, 1993. These are all multi-purpose satellites for telecommunication. On 29 September 1997, ISRO launched its first fully operational satellite abroad, a locally developed rocket. India's Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or PSLV slid into orbit an Earth imaging satellite after a textbook lift off from Sriharikota Island. Kalpana 1 was the first dedicated meteorological satellite launched by ISRO using PSLV on September 12, 2002. Then ISRO launched GSAT 3 also known as EDUSAT, a communication satellite, on 20th September 2004. EDUSAT is the first Indian satellite built exclusively to serve educational sector. On December 22, 2005, ISRO successfully launched INSAT 4A from the European Ariane 5G launch vehicle of Ariane Space. With 12 high-power Kuban transponders, INSAT 4A was the first satellite to meet the requirement of direct-to-home television services apart from carrying 12 C-band transponders to augment the INSAT capacity for communication and TV services. And with successful launch of Chandrayaan-1 on October 22, 2008, ISRO's historic moon mission began. It was sent in space through PSLV C-11. ISRO had another major success on July 1, 2013 when it launched IRNSS 1A navigation satellite. Along with this, India has stepped in to make its GPS system on the lines of America. It was on 5 November 2013 when India successfully launched its Mars Orbiter mission or Mangalyaan, a space probe orbiting Mars since 24 September 2014. The 350-ton Mangalyaan was scheduled to orbit Earth for nearly a month, building up the necessary velocity to break free from our planet's gravitational pull. The total cost of the project was 450 crore rupees, one-sixth of the cost of a Mars probe set to be launched by NASA in 13 days. IRNSS-1I was the eighth navigation satellite to join the IRNSS space segment launched by the ISRO in April 2018. On February 15, 2017, ISRO wrote a new chapter in the history of space research by creating a world record of launching 104 satellites simultaneously through PSLV C-37. It was the 38th successful mission of PSLV in a row. The total weight of all the 104 satellites carried on board PSLV C-37 was 1,378 kgs. PSLV C-37 blasted off first from the launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Centre and first injected Karosat 2 series satellite into orbit followed by the other 103 nanosatellites, including 96 from the US, in a gap of about 30 minutes. The GSLV Mark III, the heaviest rocket ever made by India and capable of carrying large payloads, was launched from Sriharikota on June 5, 2017. GSLV MK3 was designed to carry four ton class of satellites into geosynchronous transfer orbit, which is about twice the capacity of GSLV Mark II. At the same time, India has made its place in the field of space technology as the world's number one leading nations.
On June 29, 2017, ISRO launched GSAT-17, the heaviest satellite ever weighing 3,477 kgs. On January 12, 2018, ISRO successfully launched 31 satellites in a single flight. The PSLV carries 31 satellites in total from countries, including India and six other countries. HSS weighing about 380 kgs was launched on November 29, 2018. It is an Earth observation satellite, primary goal to provide hyperspectral imaging services to India for a range of applications in agriculture, forestry as well as defence. On December 19, 2018, GSAT-7A was successfully launched. It is ISRO's 39th geostationary satellite carrying communication transponders. ISRO launched Kalamsat V2 on January 24, 2018. It is a communication satellite built by the students of Space Kids India. For ham radio transmission, a form of wireless communication used by amateurs for non-commercial activities. ISRO successfully launched MSAT satellite along with 28 satellites from Sri Harikota on 1st April 2019. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV So that's it from us in this edition of In-Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. You can also watch our program online on YouTube and Twitter. And don't forget to send your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you for your time.